guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and I'm here with the start of a new reading vlog. That is two out of the three I'm doing for reading the best romances of 2021, and this is reading BookTube's favorite romances of 2021. I have a very ambitious TBR. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books I'm reading for this video, so I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I love BookTubers so much, and I have so many people I follow that I wanted to add in this video, and I just kept on adding more as people were releasing their videos, and I've tried to include smaller creators because I think they deserve so much more love than they get because it's hard to find people in the vast of booktube and so I hope you guys give all these people a follow I love following them and I'm so excited to read their recommendations these are all books that were on their favorite books of 2021 list and I have some like people that we all know and love and then I have some people that you might not have heard of before so I hope you enjoy this video I'm gonna go into the books that I can't wait to read okay so let's start with I don't even know who I want to start with um let's start with I'll go from bottom to top so we have the last one I added to this list is from Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. I love Crystal so much. I love her videos. She reads a lot of historical but also contemporary and she does a lot of reading vlogs so check her out if you haven't. She loved Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas. I still have not read this book and I have it on audio so I slapped it onto this list because I was like I need to read this book. Crystal loved it so I have to read it. I don't know anything about it. I think it's Sebastian and Evie's child. I don't remember if it's her son or daughter from Devil in Winter, I'm pretty sure, and I think it's a Scottish hero, and that's all I know about this book. So, I'm excited to read it. Then we have Erin from Booked and Busy. So, Erin terrifies me when it comes to romance because she is such a harsh critic of everything she reads and so I'm always worried when she reads a favorite of mine that she's just gonna destroy it because she has a very specific taste. She did love Forget Me Not which made me very happy because that's one of my favorites and she had a couple of my favorite historical romances on her top of 2021 and I remember her telling me to read this book and then I saw it on her list and I was like I have to read it and that is Lola and the Millionaires by Catherine Moon and Lola and the Millionaires is a reverse harem that I know Erin loved and I'm very excited. Erin reads a lot of different books so she reads a lot of fantasy but she also reads romance and I love that she reads romance as well so make sure you check out her channel if you have not yet. I love Erin so much and I'm so excited that I finally being forced to read this book because I've been loving reverse harem this year and I'm excited to read more. Okay so then this one was on my TBR last year and I never got around to it but Tori from Novel Life who is one of my really good friends here and I love her channel. Make she watch her channel she reads a lot of again historical romance and contemporary romance but she also does love historical fiction and I know she just started a book club with Sam from Sam Reads a Little and I'm gonna be seeing both of them in February at the Nashville signing so I'm super excited for that but Tori loved Unhinged by Onley James this is a serial killer MM romance and they were like raised by their foster parent I think to be civil serial killers so like only killing off people who deserve to die because they like they need to kill so they like kill people that I guess are okay being killed. I don't know. Like, it's totally not morally right, but you know, I'm excited to read this book and I've been meaning to read it for a while, so I'm definitely gonna read it for this video. Then I have Mackie from Mackie Really Reads. I found Mackie because she did a video reading my favorite books, so then I started following her and she reads a ton of indie romances, so if you're not following her yet, you definitely have to check her out, but one of her favorites was Hookshot, and this one is, I'm making sure it's the right title. This is the third book in the Hoop series, and I know that the hero is a single dad. Jacoby Diem is the male narrator of this book, and I love him as a narrator, so I did start the audiobook actually this morning, and I'm only an hour into it, but he's a single dad in basketball player and he's going through a divorce or I think he did get divorced she cheated on him and so he's really into Lotus though and I'm really excited to read this book so I'm so happy with on Mackie's favorites and I'm definitely starting this one first so I'm already listening to my audio and I cannot wait to continue on then we have Manda from ginger snap reads Manda I also recently discovered I feel like within the past couple months and she also reads a lot of indie romances and I was really excited to see the fine print by Lauren Asher on her top reads because this one is one I've been eyeing and am interested because I, I liked Throttled, but I didn't love it. And this one is an architect romance, and I've seen it everywhere. And the alternate cover is gorgeous. I really love both the covers that Lauren Asher has of her books with, like, the characters on the cover and then the non-character covers. So I'm really, really excited to put this on my TBR. It's going to force me. A lot of these are forcing me to read books that have been on my TBR for a few months. And I love Manda so much. She does so many reading sprints. And so I usually pop in for about an hour, an hour and a half before I fall asleep 
watching them but it's fun to read with her and I really love watching her videos especially when she talks about like her recent reads and I definitely recommend checking her out. Then Naima from Naima Reads does love Sophie Lark and I love Naima. I've talked about her a lot on my channel. She has such a great channel where she reads a lot of dark romances and she always talks about books that I'm dying to read and so the one on her list is The Air by Sophie Lark. This one is the first book in the something series. It's not Brutal Birthright, it is the other one. And it's like a boarding school for mafia kids and it's the children of the Brutal Birthright series. I read the first two of the Brutal Birthright series and I loved them, but I never continued on, but I really want to read this series too. So I'm going to pop into the air and then go back to the other series, but I definitely need to read this book and I'm going to. It's chunky, but I'm going to. And the last one is one that I've been meaning to read for so long, and it's also a chunky book, and that is from Mary from More to Mary. Mary loves taboo and dark romances. You probably already follow her. She is just so fun to watch, and I love getting new recommendations from her. And the one I'm going to be reading is Hello Stranger by Jade West. This one is a emotional romance I think and I think it might mm, I don't know if it's single parent but they meet on a train and they're like reading each other's favorite books or something and that's all I know about this book but people love it and so I really want to read it and I'm going to for this video so those are the seven books I'm going to be reading from the seven amazing content creators that I follow on YouTube so make sure you go follow everybody down below and I'm gonna go get reading and I will talk to you when I have an update oh you're gonna get down what I did not stroll her for her to want to get her ball. But my sister and I just got back from walking the dogs. They don't care about the word now that we're already back. But I had a snow day today slash understaffed day. Um, it snowed a lot Sunday night and it is currently Tuesday. I know a lot of schools were closed today, but they also said and staffing issues, which was why we were virtual all last week and had Friday off. So it's now my fifth day of the weekend because we had Martin Luther King Jr. day off, which actually would have been a snow day anyways because the snow was a lot Sunday night. But I've had time to read today. So I got like everything I needed to get done yesterday. So today I just told myself I would film some TikTok so I can get ahead on that and then read. So I'm actually halfway through Lola and the Millionaires and it is, so good. I shared it on my Instagram that I was reading it and Erin did comment that she was super excited and I told her it might have to do with her. That was the reason why I was reading it and then I got a couple other people who told me that they loved the book and they were excited that I was reading it. It is a reverse harem and I think it mostly reminds me of A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor and the reverse harem romance in there because all the relationships are developed kind of individually but like you know she really likes the guys and their dynamics with each other are very interesting i don't know if this is considered part of the omega verse because it's like omega alphas and betas i have no idea about any of that i'm pretty sure samantha from books with samantha did a video on that and i think she loves this book because i know she loves Catherine moon so i'm just here for the ride of figuring out the relationships between alphas omegas and betas and all that stuff and our heroine lola actually had a very bad relationship with someone and it turned into assault and she is severely traumatized by that and so that's affecting her relationship now and all the guys are extremely patient with her and so protective of her and i really love it so she developed a relationship with leo first and i love their romance so much and right now something is developing with rake i think I don't remember his name, but I really love it. And I'm also loving her job as like part of a fashion team thing. And that's how she met a couple of them. And so I'm really, really loving this and I'm excited to see where it goes. I don't know if someone from her past is actually gonna come and be a problem or like if there's gonna be a plot like that, but I just really like this slow development of her romance with some of the guys and she's slowly becoming comfortable being around them. So it is so good and I'm really loving it. And also Hookshot, it's really interesting because like both of the heroines in the books I'm reading kind of have more creative jobs. Like Lola works for a design fashion kind of team and our heroine in hookshot lotus i just almost forgot her name she is working for like a marketing company and i don't know if it's the watch company because they were what well, was hiring our hero to do but he's a single dad she also was assaulted in her past and that's going to come into play in the book they haven't really delved into it that much yet but i'm pretty sure she's going to have to deal with that because people said this is super emotional and it's not emotional yet and i'm already four hours into the book, but we'll see how their relationship develops. And he's a single dad. His wife had cheated on him. And so they got a divorce and I really don't like her. I hope she doesn't become a problem in their relationship because I don't like like other women drama, but I really love their romance so far in their relationship. So 
books are going really well so far but i figured because i know these are two highly hyped books by a lot of people so i'm really enjoying them and i'm super happy i picked up lola and the millionaires because i don't know if i would have picked it up otherwise if people weren't super excited about it and if aaron wasn't obsessed with it because it's not something I would normally gravitate towards because of the whole Omega Beta Alpha thing that I'm normally not into. Not that I'm not into it, but I haven't like delved into it. So I'm kind of like scared to learn all that stuff and see if I understand it. But so far it's pr going pretty well and I'm excited to read more. I'm gonna try to finish tonight, but I've been watching Cheer season two and I wanna watch a couple more episodes tonight. I watched two yesterday and my sister's going to work. She doesn't really care about this season. So I'm gonna watch two more tonight, hopefully. There's nine episodes and I'm on episode five now. So we'll see. And while I do that, I'm gonna edit my vlog that I did for my members if you guys are interested you can become a member of my channel and get some exclusive content and get extra videos from me but I have to go because we're gonna watch below deck now but I'll talk to you guys later we have Miss Darcy sleeping away she's so cute look at her little, her little puppy hi Lily she just left me she was next to me hi guys so it is actually Thursday night Finally returned to a normal school day yesterday, and then we had a schedule tour at a later day for teacher time in the morning. So tomorrow we're back to school, though they did cancel school for the middle schools tomorrow. So tomorrow's back to school for us again, so tomorrow's Friday. And I have a lot to update you guys on. I have been reading a lot. So I finished two books, and I'm 40% to another, and a little bit into another. So I did finish Lola and the Millionaires, and I think I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. I really love their romance. It really reminded me of a Lady of Rook's Grave Manor of how the relationship of the reverse harem was with everybody and how much the guys were just like absolutely smitten with the girl and so sweet because it's not what I'm used to because I've read like Tate James' reverse harems and they're not like absolutely smitten with the girl. At least not all of them are and there's like a, like a love-hate relationship between her and some of them. In Catherine Moon's, it's just like they all are like obsessed and idolize her and so this one was good it does have trigger warnings though for sexual assault she went through a really bad experience with someone and that's really affecting her but i loved how patient they were with her i loved how sweet they were the only thing i wanted was a little bit more plot and i knew that there was going to be a little bit of suspense but it literally didn't come until the end and this is like a 360 page book so i wanted a little bit more plot to that to like the background because in lady of rook's great manor there was a villain and everything kind of wrapped up at the end with that and i wanted more of that throughout the book i know it's two books but i feel like it was just dragged to the end to give us a cliffhanger to want to pick up book two so i wanted a little bit more plot aside from the romance but i really liked how the romance developed i liked all of their interactions with each other i loved how slowly her relationship developed it was like kind of a slow burn because she started out with leo and then it slowly added a guy slowly added another one and then another one and i really liked it and i think there were like five or six of them i don't remember but really enjoy this one i'm excited to read the second book i won't for this vlog but I just really, really enjoyed it. So I think also if you liked Lady of Rookscreen Manor, you would like this one with like the Alpha, Omega, Beta. It really felt like a werewolf romance because like they consider themselves pack and they just like felt like family with a lot of them and in a relationship with some of them. So like all the guys weren't in a relationship together, only a couple of them were, but the other ones it was like part of their pack. And so calling themselves pack and like with the nesting kind of stuff reminded me it was kind of paranormal. I guess you would consider this paranormal, but like the closest thing I can compare it to is like a werewolf romance. So really fun. Glad I read that. But then I finished Hookshot. And this one, I'm also giving four and a half stars. I listened to the audiobook. My only complaint, it was long. So again, we have trigger warnings for sexual assault and definite trigger warning for suicide. So know that before you read this book. It was definitely very heavy and emotional. I really loved how the hero was a single dad and like how they both realize that their relationship had to become second to everything else that was important in their lives and so that was really heartbreaking to read but I love that he was a basketball player I would have liked more basketball because we didn't get that much basketball I don't even think she went to any of his games or anything I don't know if it was even during season he was a basketball player I would have liked more and I think the book went on a little too long I think the beginning was a little too long because I was like six hours into the audiobook and I was like what's really happened there was a lot of slow build up in the plot in the book and i feel like it should have been a little bit quicker in the beginning so that's why i'm giving it four and a half stars just for the pacing for a little bit of it because like i said it's a long book and not a lot actually happens until like halfway through on but i really liked how 
Kennedy Ryan does it so well. It's like the hero is absolutely smitten and there's literally no one else in the world for him. That's what happened with Grip, which I just read this month too. And in this one, it was the same thing. He was like, no one compares to her and she is mine. I don't usually love a jealous ex, which was in here, but I think it was done really well because he had a child with her and she was on like a reality show and like wanting him back even though she's the one who cheated on him. But I just really enjoy this one as well. Very, very emotional, very heart-wrenching with what they have to go through. But that's just your typical Kennedy Ryan. It's not my favorite from her, so I'm giving it four and a half stars. Like Kingmaker series, top tier. Real top tier. Even Grip I liked better than this one. So I, it might be my least favorite one, but I rated it four and a half stars. So that tells you about Kennedy Ryan. I absolutely love her books, but this one was good. I think I probably liked the first one better. I have no recollection of what the first one's about. I read it so long ago and I need to pick up book two again. I've only read half of book two, but I did enjoy this one. So two 4.5 stars books so far and I started the fine print and I'm loving it. It's kind of slowing down a little bit, but like when I started absolutely loving it first i was like thinking about i have to go to disney this summer on vacation like i want to go to disney so badly after reading this because his grandfather passes away and his grandfather like owns this amusement park like disney and in his will he put three tasks for his three grandchildren to get ownership of the of the amusement park and so his task our main characters is to do some sort of huge project and so he needs to like figure out what project to do to like renovate and make the park better. His one brother's though is to get married and have a baby. And I'm like, we better be getting a book about him. And I don't remember what the third brother's one, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a book about each brother, which I'm really excited for already. Like the minute we met them, I was like, that's gonna be a book. I cannot wait. And so he meets Zara, who she works for the amusement park in like the beauty part. And he's instantly intrigued by her. And she drunkenly submits a proposal of a change because they like let people submit proposals and then they can be on like the creator team. And they liked it so much that she's on the creator team now. And she was dating someone who stole her idea previously though. And she knew his grandfather. And so they're working together. Very much Grump Sunshine, which I really enjoy. And Enemies. He cannot stand her but she's just such a sunshine and we have texting but she doesn't know he's the one she's texting i don't want to spoil it but i love that so like they're talking to each other he knows who she is but she doesn't know who he is and it's so good and he still like kind of hates her and he's such a grump and i'm really really enjoying it i'm 40 percent in already and it's not that short of a book so it's so good i've already been talking so long oh my gosh but i had so many updates for you and i started so i'm really enjoying this i'm gonna continue reading i'm gonna try to finish tonight i don't know if i will i'm actually really tired tonight two days back to back to work is a little draining like i have to get back into the swing of school and it takes me a couple days to like adjust after having so much time off so it's okay tomorrow's friday but i started the audiobook of the lisa claypas had to slow it down because i remember when i first tried it the uh, accents are so fast so I slowed it down to 2.6 instead of 3 and I'm catching on now and so so far she like owns a shipping company which is really really cool and he has like a whiskey business and he like goes there with a problem and they've already kissed which is interesting because typically historical romances don't develop that fast I'm only three hours in but they kiss like around an hour in and she is a widow though which I did not know she doesn't have any kids but she's a widow so she can like be alone with him and like chaperone him and stuff and so that's why they're allowed to do like scandalous things because she is a widow and it was sad because she was like I married the only man who I knew couldn't break my heart but he did anyway when he died oh my gosh that was so sad and so it's interesting to see her her relationship then with our hero our hero scottish and i really enjoy him but i don't know like where the plot's going so i don't know where things are supposed to be going she has a brother and oh he just did something like did happen um and so i'm wondering if that's going to carry the plot more because i don't know like what the point is like okay they work with each other but like what's what's the end goal here i don't know but something happened and there was a little bit of a caretaking scene and i really liked it so they banter a lot it's cute so i'm excited to continue on with that but i i want to know like where where's this going so that's what i have so far i need to get to reading because it's like seven o'clock already and i think i have three hours left in my audiobook and i probably won't be able to finish next i'll probably fall asleep before then but that's my update for you guys it's tomorrow's friday and then i have my interview with qb tyler on saturday and i'm so so excited to talk to her mckay did an entire guide to qb tyler's books which i highly recommend watching so i'll link that down below if you haven't seen it yet mckay is going to be interviewing qb tyler with me so i can't wait to talk to her and yeah i'm going to finish more of this book 
the fine print and hopefully finish it tonight. I probably won't because I always say that in vlogs and end up taking like an extra day to finish it. And then listen to more of Lisa Claypuss tomorrow. I might be able to finish that tomorrow because I do have some sewing to do and I'll read it on the way to and from school as well. So we will see how far I get with these books. I'm hoping to finish two more tomorrow. It's a little ambitious. Oh, but Sophie Lark released her special covers for There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil and they're really cute. They're like discreet covers, which that's a whole thing I don't want to get into, but I do like how cute they are. Like the fine print has two different covers and I love the illustrated one, the like hassle on the cover. It just fits the story so well. So I highly recommend checking out Sophie's covers. I know she's redoing like all of her covers with not people on them and I'm intrigued to see them. So yeah, but that's all I have. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi guys. So it is actually currently Saturday. Yesterday was a very long day. It was Friday. I woke up with a headache and then it was just like a long day and I didn't feel like uh, talking to anybody. So I did end up watching and the next episode of Amazing Grace and then reading. So I have a lot of reading updates for you. I finished... Sorry about the glare on my glasses. I just, I can never fix that. But I did finish The Fine Print like, by Lauren Asher and I'm giving it four stars. So the first half was like five star read. I was obsessed. I loved how it was very enemies to lovers, how he was so grumpy and she was a sunshine. And he even like met her sister and did this like mentorship program with her sister because her sister has Down syndrome. And it was just so sweet watching his heart like melt. But it felt like they got rid of that enemies like or hate so fast by halfway through and then he was just like oh well, like we're so into each other and the only conflict was themselves him saying like we're not together we're just like having a fling and I don't love it when the only conflict is themselves and I'm just like you guys are being annoying and like self-sabotaging so I just didn't love love the second half of the book and I'm giving it four stars I did think also that like the whole amusement park thing like just kind of disappeared after the halfway mark because he was very sweet he took her on trips and did like amazing surprises for her and just like got uh gratitude or like got pleasure out of like spoiling her so he loved just like giving her everything and it was so cute but I didn't feel that like same magical amusement park feeling I got when I got did in the first half because I feel like we just like stopped focusing on that more and just focused on like their feelings for each other and I still wanted that whole atmosphere to the book so that's why I gave it four out of five stars I just wanted a little bit more out of everything for the second half but the ending was really sweet I saw that coming but I really liked where it all went at the end so still recommend this book but I just like had my hopes up so high after that first half I was loving it and obsessing over it so much and then I was like oh this is how it's ending oh this is fine so it was good I'm glad I read it and I still really think Lauren Asher has potential for me as an author like I said throttle I gave I think four stars and that was a pretty good book but I think I like more in the throttled series the dirty air series maybe is that what it's called I don't remember I think I like more in her series that I haven't read yet but I still have to read more from there but glad I read this one and it's just another like super hyped book that a lot of people love that I can see why they love it so I can see why Amanda loved this book and I still enjoyed it a lot so read it if you're interested but I am almost done I have like 50 minutes of the audiobook left of the Lisa Kleypas book Devil in Disguise and I don't, I'm so conflicted on this book. So it actually, so the first like three hours of the audiobook, I was like, oh, this is like, so a third of the book. It's a nine hour audiobook. I was like, well, this is nice. It's kind of insta love. Where's this plot gonna go? Like, oh, someone tried to kill him. Like, that's what the, the, uh, additional plot is is like why they're trying to kill him and like those secrets but I was like with the romance I'm like where are we gonna go he gets amnesia and I was like yes I'm gonna love this but it was just okay like this is just a very low stakes sweet romance where they just like fall head over heels for each other and I guess I'm used to like Lorraine Heath with her historicals where they're super angsty and it takes a while for the couple to like be able to be together like even scoundrel of my heart was so angsty and they just like danced around each other and like a whole year passed and they still couldn't be together and in this one it's like literally a week went by and they were like on the way to falling in love and so and then he got amnesia and she's like oh my gosh and then he's like why am i feeling these things for her i don't know her and it was just like okay it was just like very we're just super smitten with each other and those 
aren't really my absolute favorites in historicals because I'm just really tormented and I like my characters to be tormented. So I want it, I want a little more. I did enjoy our hero's past and who he is and it's really sweet. Like this book is just really sweet. And if you like the Wallflower series, you will love this because Sebastian and Evie are in here a lot. Lillian's in here a lot because our heroine is Lillian's daughter and I just finished reading that second book and I really did enjoy book three. I haven't yet read book four but I don't think a lot of those characters are in this book but it's just like as a Wallflower fan it's super sweet to read but like as a romance it's just very sweet. So I'm on my way to giving it like four stars because I am enjoying it but like for my reading taste I'm just like a little bit underwhelmed by the romance because I need a little bit more stakes to happen and there's not really a lot happening and even as an amnesia romance I was like oh yes but it's like that didn't last like really long and it didn't really feel that angsty so it's just okay but the real reason I'm excited to be on here I started unhinged and talk about angst oh my gosh so unhinged is the serial killer romance and I'm obsessed with dark romances I love serial killer romances I love when one of the characters is just like morally wrong but like kind of for a right reason so you're just as a reader very morally conflicted so Adam was adopted as a young child I think there's like seven of them they all have been diagnosed as like psychopaths or sociopaths and the father of them adopted them and he was going to train them to harness their so sociopath psychopath tendencies to kill bad people so he's like I know you need to kill so we're gonna harness that for evil for good that's why it's like unnecessary evils and so Adam it was adopted and he has a very bad past like he was not raised in a good environment and that's partly why he is the way he is and so he kills people and I really like how different the brothers are like they all have their own little specialties and own way they're, they're living life normally so Adam is a model and he had killed Noah's dad when he was only when Adam was 16 and Noah was like 11 or 10 and so Noah found his dad's body and knew that that Adam killed him so Noah's finally tracked Adam down and he is like you kill my father they're like I think Noah's like 21 now and so um Adam's like 26 27 I don't remember how old he is and so he's like you kill my dad I'm not here for revenge and Adam's like you know what your dad did right and Noah's like no so Adam tells him and things start resurfacing for Noah and his memory and Noah wants to now track down people involved in that and so Adam and Noah are gonna team up and they're already like together and it's so sweet like their dynamics are amazing and I'm obsessed with their romance like it's kind of not insta love though it's like very insta lust because Adam says I'm a psychopath I can't feel love and Noah is just like what is happening here I like really like it but I know I shouldn't and it's just so good I love their dynamics I just love love it so much I'm 25% of the way through and I'm obsessed so I'm so excited to read this I'm probably gonna finish it today because I'm going to my parents house today it's supposed to snow tomorrow so today's Saturday go over to my parents and I have my interview with QP Tyler with my K and I'm so excited I just plan on reading this and finishing it because it's so good. I read it on the treadmill this morning while I was running and I wanted to run longer because I was like, I want to just keep on reading this book. It's so good. So I'm loving this and I'm so excited. I already posted about it on TikTok because I was like, I have to share about this book because it's amazing. But those are all the updates I have for you. After this, I'm probably going to pick up The Air. Yeah, I'm going to pick up The Sophie Lark next. Save Jade West for last and if I feel like reading it or not, we'll see. But I will talk to you guys later after I finish more of Unhinged and I really hope that I love it. Happy Sunday with this little puppy next to me. I have a bunch of reading updates for you. So I finished two books since I last talked to you. I finally finished Devil in Disguise. I did not love this book. I'm giving it three, three and a half stars. Um, even after talking to Lisa from Mar Markably Lisa made me feel validated that I didn't love it as much as everybody else does. I know Crystal loved it. That's why I'm reading it for this video. And Lacey loved it. She gave it five stars. But I just didn't love the romance and how insta-love it was and the overall plot was just okay. I feel like the only reason I really wanted to keep reading was because I saw all the wallflowers and it was like their kids and it was super cute seeing them. And then the epilogue made me mad. So... I don't want to go like into too many spoilers, but I'll go ahead and put a spoiler warning here for this book and you can just skip over it if you haven't read it, but our heroine says that she's infertile because she was married and never got to have babies and went to the doctor and he said she was infertile. Well, and the hero was totally fine with it and I was like, oh, I love this. He's like, well, adopt babies. Like I came from a family that, cause I think, I don't think his mom died and he didn't know his dad obviously from the plot. And he's like, I like know what it's like. I would definitely like adoption is totally fine. But the epilogue is like, she got pregnant. 
and like the dad's super excited. He's like, oh, I knew my son could do that. And I'm just like, I would have been totally fine having an infertile heroine and her be infertile. And I've read too many books where they say they're infertile and they've like been dealing with that and have to open up to their significant other about it. And then miraculously they have a baby in the epilogue because that's the only way they can be happy. So it was annoying that that choice was made. And I feel like I would have liked it better if like they had just like adopted a child somewhere from something. I don't know. But so that also put a bad taste in my mouth after finishing this book. So I'm giving it three stars officially, which is sad because I haven't been reading too many historicals lately. And and this one it doesn't make me want to pick up another one because it's just so slow. It makes me want to read Lorraine Heath because I'm like, give me some more angst in my historicals. I don't need it where they fall for each other after knowing each other for two days. So I also though finished Unhinged. I read like the majority of it yesterday and it was absolutely amazing. I'm giving this five stars. I talked about it on a TikTok. I was like, how can something be so dark? But have the sweetest romance ever because he's a serial killer and our other hero went through horrific assault as a child and they were tracking down men who assaulted him as a child and like that's what the premise of the book is but the adam is just so patient and calm and adorable with noah and i was obsessed with their romance they were so cute and i just loved them to death and i wanted them to find a way to be together i loved how noah got to meet adam's family and his dad and how all of that worked out and how everybody kind of came together and it was just such a good romance it is dark it's a serial killer romance he's raised to be a serial killer because he's a psychopath but it was so good i'm so excited to read the other brothers books because there are what seven of them and i think there's four books out now or book four is about to come out i don't remember people have been telling me on instagram because everybody that i've talked to on instagram about this book has loved it and so i'm so happy i read it it was such a fast read too i think it was only just over 300 pages so i like i said read it in like one day and i just could not put it down it was so good it was so cute i just could not get enough of their romance so i'm excited to read more and i didn't know there's two other series i think that are spinoffs of this so i do want to check those out but i did start the air this morning when i went for my run and it is also so good so far but i love sophie lark so i knew i would love this and it's interesting because the formatting of sophie lark's books is different so her text is bigger and she has a space in between each paragraph so it says it's over 500 pages but it's not like a normal 500 page book it's not going to take me that long to read i think i only have like four hours left i'm only 15 um percent into the book but we have i was very confused because we have our heroine and i don't know who the hero is going to be but she's talking about her cousin and her cousin kind of likes her a little too much and i was like i thought this was going to be a love interest they're not like literal cousins they're like families are married to each other in a way but they're not blood related and i feel like he likes her but then we also got a point of view of dean and i don't know who our love interest is going to be but they both got accepted into the school it was a really fun introduction to our characters with the one hero at a basketball game and it was really funny and then they're on their way to the school and they meet a couple people so i'm loving the vibes of this book so much and how they're going to the secret mafia school and how they already don't get along with some people but how they're from like all over the world from all different cultures speak different languages but they're all mafia children so it's gonna be super fun i'm really excited to read more and that's really all i have to do today i already filmed my videos today took some instagram pictures but it's snowing a lot so fingers crossed for a snow day tomorrow but we will see and yeah i'm gonna read today i have to edit a video and that's all I have. I was at my parents' house yesterday, so that's where I was reading, like, the majority of Unhinged, but that's all I have. So I will read more and maybe up to you guys later tonight as I cuddle with Miss Lillyboo. Hello, everybody. It is actually Tuesday. I had a snow day yesterday, and I didn't update you, though, because my sister was home, and I felt bad because we both like our alone time, and she's a night shift nurse, so a few times a week, I have the entire night to myself. She's not there. I can watch whatever shows I want to, and a few days during the week, she gets her alone time in the day when I'm at work, and she's not having to sleep after working, and so yesterday was supposed to be, like, one of her days to herself and i had a snow day so i was home and so she really anno is annoyed when i film when she's home just because she like can't make a lot of noise and even though i'm up here like our house isn't that big she can still hear me talking so she's actually working out right now so i feel like i'm not bothering her because she's in the basement but i just didn't want to film to bother her so i did finish a book yesterday that i wanted to update you on but i'm doing it today i finished the air absolute five out of five stars i'm so obsessed with this book now i was annoyed with dean's character and how he got 
Dean and Leo and Anna, I think it was Anna, all three of their perspectives when it was like kind of a love triangle. I, I kind of talked about that a little bit, how I wasn't sure who her relationship was with and it kind of became pretty clear who it was supposed to be with and I really did not end up liking Dean at all and it was really hard to read his chapters because I was really annoyed with him. I didn't love the fact that we got his point of view but this book I loved so much because I love a good like suspense romance and that's why I love mafia romances so much and I get annoyed when they don't have mafia content. They're out of school and they have all these different competitions and so they have like all the grade levels compete against each other and so we ha get to see these games and trials and they're so interesting and I was hooked. Like the last one I was just like speed reading. I was like oh my gosh what's gonna happen? what's gonna happen oh my gosh it was so good and then that on top of the romance the romance was amazing I love Leo so much. I posted a TikTok about it and someone was like, Leo annoyed me. I love Leo. I loved how their romance was and how he finally was able to get her. Like, it's an instance where it's friends to lovers and they don't acknowledge that they like each other. And so, like, you're kind of annoyed they don't do anything about it, but they're friends and they've been best friends and they've been raised as cousins, even though they're not technically cousins. So, the whole they sorry lily's getting a drink of water behind me if you can hear her but i wasn't annoyed by how drawn out the romance was because like they were grew up very protective of each other and it was slowly like turning into something more so this was a great friends to lovers is miss lily coming hi lily hey should i say hi I had to work I had a training after work today so I got home a little later than normal so it's a closer for her dinner time than normal so she just wants to eat but I really love this book so much like I flew through it and I literally went to my sister and I told her the entire plot of the book because I was freaking out about it it's a book she wouldn't like so I was like you're not gonna read it let me tell you all about this book because she doesn't like new at all age stuff she likes adult or YA fantasy like that's all she'll read so I just loved it I had to talk about it and I was obsessed with it like oh my gosh the characters were amazing the romance was amazing the entire world of this mafia school was absolutely amazing and I'm so excited to continue on but I do want to go back and finish the brutal birthright series first because I've only read those first two and Anna is actually the child of the couple in book two and I have not yet gotten to Leo's parents romance and so I feel like I missed a little bit out on that not like plot wise like Sophie gives us enough background to understand the, the Kingmaker series if we read it as on its own but I feel like as a reader I will appreciate the world more if I read the Brutal Birthright series first so I'm gonna put the next book in the, the Kingmaker series on hold go back and read the four I have left I went ahead on Amazon I just like want to buy books right now so I bought her two new covers for the There Are No Saints Sir in the Center whatever the duet um that she had the serial killer one. I really like love the first one. The second one was a little disappointing, but she came out with new covers for them that I wanted. So I ordered those and I ordered the last two in the Brutal Birthright series I needed. And then I ordered Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. So those are all coming in the mail to me. I just wanted to splurge a little on some paperbacks I wanted, but I just like need all of Sophie's backlist. And I believe she's gonna be at a Polycon, which I'm going to this summer. So that's super exciting. I'm just excited to read so much more of what she has written. And this book was as amazing as Naima said it was. Like it is amazing and I'm so happy I read it and then I actually had a tour delay today but we the kids were so angry it was not at school off I started Hello Stranger but I like didn't start it until yesterday night so I finished the air around noon yesterday and I was in like such a book hangover as much as I get into that where I just like can't read for a couple hours I'm like I need to and digest this book and everything that happened and just like be in my feels for a second so i didn't read until yesterday night but then we had a two hour delay today so i got up at six and normally get up at 5 30 on normal school days so i got up at six today and went ahead and worked out this morning and then read a bunch last night i did end up reading a bunch so i'm about 40 percent into hello stranger and i feel like i shouldn't have read this right after the air because the air was so action-packed romance and character driven it was just like such a fast-paced story and i loved it hello strangers very not that it's very character driven and very lyrical and very emotion based so our heroine chloe is um on a train and she sees this guy she drops her bookmark he picks it up and then he gives it to her the next day she's new a nurse and new on this floor and he is someone i don't want to say so uh they are intertwined somehow but he is always on this train and he's always reading and she's always reading and so it becomes their thing to talk about what they're reading to each other or show each other what they're reading and they're really just 
captured by each other. They just cannot stop thinking about each other. And he's 41 and she's 22, so there's a bit of an age gap. And it's mostly just about our characters and how they feel. And it's a lot of talk of their emotions. So it's a lot of inner monologue about them and how they're feeling and what they want out of life. And like, there's not a whole lot of plot going on right now and I'm a little bit bored. And I feel like I'm only feeling this way because I just read The Air. If I read this at a different time where I was in the mood for this kind of book, I think I would really, really enjoy this. And I'm interested to see where the emotions come into play too. I don't know. I don't know. So it's just okay right now. I'm not completely invested. I like get it, but it's not hooking me. So I feel bad because I'm already 40% of the way through, but everybody tells me this book is amazing. And right now I'm just like, okay, it's fine. I don't know if something's going to happen to make it turn. I feel like in these reading vlogs, I'm always like, this book is fine. And then I end up completely loving it. Like all roads lead here in my last vlog. I was like, it's fine. And then I came back and was like five stars. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know how it's gonna go but I do plan on reading a lot more tonight it's supposed to be like two degrees outside tomorrow morning without the wind chill I think it's supposed to be like negative 15 with wind chill so we'll see how school goes tomorrow we almost never delay or cancel because of the cold but we have a lot of kids who walk to school and it hasn't been this cold in a while so we'll see I was annoyed having a tour delay today because I got literally nothing done I only get 25 minutes of my conference period of work time and then a 30 minute lunch and I got no work done today. But that happens every time we have a two-hour delay day. So it's kind of annoyed we ended up having a two-hour delay. I was like, either just make us come in or cancel school. Because I'm so far behind on grading my essays. Because we've had so many snow days lately. And I am not letting myself work at home. So I don't bring any work home. I don't bring grading home. Because that is my time. But I'm pretty good at time management. And I just have gave myself until this Friday to grade their essays. So I'm going to really have to like cram in grading. I have a half a class done and I have two classes to read but essays take so long to grade so I have four days that I need to well technically three now I have my three days I might push it back a day they're super understanding though like these essays take I give a lot of feedback on their essays so they know it takes me a while to give them uh their feedback and grades to them but that's really all I have. We have Below Deck on tonight, which I'm super excited for. I've been finishing up watching Cheer season two, but my sister doesn't watch that. She's not interested in this season, so that's when I have to watch it without her. So I watched two episodes last night, and I have two left, but we have been watching Wheel of Time, and that's very interesting. We're two episodes in, and it's interesting. I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't love it, but I don't hate it, so we've been watching that together, and Below Deck we have to watch, which I'm excited for, though the season is not my favorite of Below Deck. We're gonna watch that today. So I have to watch that, make some dinner, and then read more because I need to finish this vlog. I was like, if I have a snow day today, this is going up on Wednesday, but I didn't have a snow day today. So this is gonna be going up Friday, which is okay. But yeah, that's really all I have. So I'm gonna go and get changed and try to hopefully enjoy Hello Stranger. Hey guys, so I finally finished Hello Stranger. Like I said in my last clip, I just feel like I was not in the mood for this book. I know it was supposed to be super emotional, but like I could have cared less about this plot. I feel really bad saying that because like I got a little sad in the end, but I feel like the point was to be sad and I didn't feel like I cared because they meet and they have someone in their life who's dying. So it's about them with that person who's dying and guess what? they die i'm like i knew that was coming that's not really sad and then there was like a kind of twist that like i kind of saw coming and i'm just like i don't care and like i said this was a very like pretty and lyrical book that i didn't care about there's this one conversation that i read out loud to my sister because i was like I, it's just like they were talking about their love being an ocean and like going back and forth together with this metaphor and i'm just like i'm not in the mood for this after having such like an action-packed very fast really amazing romance this one was very slow just supposed to be super emotional about the romance and it was like no plot really at all that much except for revolving around someone in their life who was dying so i just i just didn't care and i feel so bad saying that i feel like maybe i would have liked it better if i read it at a different time but i didn't care about the characters i wasn't even close to crying like i was like okay like this is happening and i know a lot of people love this book and we're super emotionally affected by it i think i'm giving it three stars i just didn't care it was very insta love they saw each other on the train immediately bonded she realized that her relationship is just like not anything special and she was miserable in it and then very insta love and then he was the one sabotaging their relationship and that's the only thing that kept them apart i don't love it when the only thing keeping people from each other are themselves because i'm like you're the problem so 
I know people love this book and I feel like it's a it's me not you thing because it's just I was not in the mood for this and I just d d couldn't care I didn't find myself caring I couldn't force myself to care and if I didn't care about them they were the the ones driving this plot so yeah, awful way to end this video, but that is the last book I have. The seventh book I have, I had so many good reads though. Like this is my lowest one. Everything else was a four or five star read. Found some new favorites that I absolutely love. So I'm happy that I did this, but let me know if you read any of these and if you enjoyed them and what your favorite reads of the year are. I would love to hear. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.